And now I'm going to put everybody on lecture mode um, to make sure that everybody is on the call can hear us properly. And then after that, we will open it back up to questions. All right, tonight, like I said, my name is Abero Koye. I'm a CPA and an active real estate investor and the founder of the Wealth Building CPA. I own real estate investments across the eastern coast. My primary strategy is buy and hold, although I've tried other real estate um, strategies. I've done rehabbing, and I've also done wholesaling, and I've tried to you know, work on tax liens. But I narrowed it down to buy and hold. That's the strategy that I work with out of the 14 real estate strategies out there. I've helped over 5,000 people like you prepare their taxes, both online and offline. And I love to work with clients all of the time because I'm a real estate investor myself and a small business owner combined with my years of experience, um, 18 years of experience as a CPA and 11 years as a real estate investor. I love to empower you. Um, to keep more money in your pocket, um, have proper asset protection, you know, in real estate, and also to make sure that you have enough funds that are saved up for retirement. Um, tonight we are going to have Sherman, Raglan. Sherman, are you on? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Uh, we're going to have Sherman Raglan with us tonight. Sherman is an active real estate investor and the founder of Real Investors Academy. He has personally closed over $15 million in small-scale commercial real estate deals in the greater Washington region. And prior to founding Real Estate Investors, he was the founder and managing partner of Tradewind Realties Advisors, a federal government financial advisory firm responsible for over $90 billion in federal government asset sales. And his greatest joy comes from showing others to have both time and money, which can only be achieved through successful real estate investing. And I think, Sherman, you forgot to put on there that you also are my mentor. That's one of the ways <laughs> to introduce yourself. But well, thank you. Thank you for being on the call tonight. My pleasure. <clears throat> All right, we're going to delve right into our topic for the evening. What are real estate IRAs? Um, most, investor, most investors think that, you know, their IRAs, whether you have a 401K or a SEP or a simple IRA, that all you can invest in is CDs, you know, the stock market and mutual funds. But they actually don't realize that it's possible to invest in your real estate with your IRA by converting it into a self-directed IRA. Um, imagine not having to pay taxes right away, you know, with what I see going on in the market now. A lot of rehabbers are making money hand over fist, and it's it's you know a lot of money out there. And you know, with having being a rehabber, your income is considered business income. So that that means you're paying anywhere upwards of 35 to 50 percent by the time you add the federal taxes, the state taxes, the self-employment tax. So imagine not having to pay those kind of taxes right away um, because you're investing through your IRA. So one of the advantages of investing in an IRA is the power of compound interest. You know, like the example that we started out with when Regina asked the question, if you purchase a property for $50,000, you know, hold it, you know, after a year and sell it for 100000 you make $50,000. Um, and then now you have hundred thousand dollars to invest in another property. Maybe you make two hundred and you have a hundred. So the power of compound interest, that money is gonna keep growing tax free compared to when you just invest regularly with whatever funds that you have that are not in a retirement account. Also it reduces your taxable income simply because whatever money that the IRA generates goes back into the IRA. That's one of the questions that was on the call earlier. It goes back into the IRA and it's tax-free. You do not have to pay taxes on it. And because you don't have to pay taxes on it, that means that whatever income you generate is not added to your individual taxable income. So you can reduce your individual taxable income by using a real estate IRA. It also helps with asset protection. You know, if you're going through bankruptcy or any kind of legal issues, usually your IRAs are not touched. Your IRAs are usually secured. So that's one advantage of also using your real estate IRA. It also helps with estate plan and being able to move assets over um, to your loved ones um, without having to deal with probate and all those things. So it's one, definitely one thing to think about combining real estate with your IRA 
it's a very powerful tool in this market. And Sherman, please feel free to jump in um, if you have a comment or two. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Bear. I, th I think, quite honestly, um, really understanding how this whole self-directed IRA thing works. And I can understand for some folks, because this is true for me, I know it was true for me, um, but it can be a little confusing up front, can be a little confusing at first. But if you, if you make the time to actually study it a little bit and understand it, it can be an incredibly powerful tool for hyper growth in your real estate business on a number of different levels. And obviously we're going to talk about that more tonight, but I completely agree with you. Yeah, and even though <clears throat> this is tailored to real estate investors tonight, this also applies to small business owners. And, you know, later on I'm going to be talking about the solo 401K, but if you're a business owner, it's even more compelling reason to think about a self-directed IRA or a solo 401K, really having a retirement fund that's at your control or at your disposal. So there are seven things um, that you must know um, when it comes to an and invest in using self-directed IRA funds. Your IRA cannot purchase property owned by you or a disqualified person. I'll be talking about who's a disqualified person later on. So you cannot go out there and use your IRA to purchase a property that you own. That's a disqualified transaction. And if you do it, your IRA, all the funds that you invested in that property will be considered distributed and taxable to you. Secondly, you cannot have indirect benefits from the property owned by your self-directed IRA, meaning you cannot go out and rent out that property for your kids or, you know, from a disqualified person. It, has to, it really has to be an arm's length transaction. Um, real estate IRA investments have to be uniquely titled. This means that if you purchase a property in your IRA, it needs to be in the name of the IRA. It cannot be in your individual name. There are very strict rules about how to operate self-directed IRAs, so you want to make sure that you have those rules so you're not violating anything that would cause your IRA funds to be distributed and taxable to you. Number four, real estate in an IRA can be purchased without 100% funding from your IRA. I actually just had a client that um, <coughs> I had to prepare a return for, and what he did was he purchased an IRA subject to the existing mortgage. So he really did not have to come up with any money from his IRA. He purchased the property subject to the existing mortgage. But because it was his IRA LLC that purchased it, eventually when he sold that property, all the, all the funds went back. Even though he had to pay UBTI, which I'm going to be talking about later on, Still, if you calculate the taxes that he would have paid if this was a direct investment, not through his IRA, the UBTI was a small amount compared to the tax savings that he got. Um, which brings us to the fifth point. Investments that use financing have to pay UBIT, unrelated business income tax. I will be you know, talking about that some more later. And then real estate IRA expenses must be paid from your IRA, like the custodian fees, um, I just had somebody ask before the um, call whether or not if you rent out property, whether the income from the property needs to go back into the IRA. The answer is yes. And also that means maintenance fees, HOA fees, management fees, you know, mortgages have to also be paid from the IRA. And then lastly, your real estate IRA income must return to your IRA. I think that's the question that Regina was asking earlier. You want to make sure that your real estate IRA is returned um, into the IRA. What do we consider a self-dealing transaction? Now, sometimes these are technical terms, so I have um, the language here. Um, you don't necessarily have to worry about the sections. I just put it in here for those who want to go back and research further. Simply, what self-dealing is, is selling, exchanging, or leasing any property between a plan and a disqualified person. For example, your IRA cannot buy property that you currently own, from you, that's self-dealing, or lending money between a plan or a disqualified person. So you want to make sure that you definitely avoid self-dealing transactions. Otherwise, that violates the whole self-directed IRA rules. And the IRS is really, really, really coming down on um, the use of self-directed IRA. So I'm going to talk about that later. So you want to make sure that you're within the rules. Still, self-directed IRA still remains one of the best ways to invest in real estate. 
who's a disqualified person? There's a list here. You know, you, your spouse, your mom, your dad, your daughters, your sons, um, daughter-in-law, investment advisors, all those are considered um, disqualified persons. One of the things that I noted was it never said anything about your brother or your um, sister here as a disqualified person. So you can take it for whatever it's worth. Now, this is a very important topic that I wanted to cover when we talk about IRA. What is unrelated business taxable income? Um, it's defined as any income that is that you get from an organization that is involved in an unrelated trade or business. So let's say the IRA, the whole purpose of setting up the IRA is for retirement. So the tax-exempt purpose of an IRA is for retirement. So when an IRA starts engaging in any other activity, apart from why it was set up, it is considered unrelated business taxable income. So the operation of a rental business by an LLC owned by a self-directed IRA could be considered unrelated business taxable income if that rental business, you know, you purchased it with a loan. So you would face UBTI on profits and, you know, not to get too complicated here, but it's just understanding, let's say you go out there and you have $50,000 like the example that we gave, but your IRA only came up with $30,000 and you went out and got a loan of $20,000. Well, what the IRS is saying is that 20% um, of the income, actually 40% of the income that you generate from that property is considered UBTI because you used a loan to purchase it. And so they consider it unrelated business income. Therefore, they want you to pay tax on that. So this is especially important for real estate investors, especially if you're going to be using loans um, to purchase property or you're going to be doing some kind of rehabbing, you know, rehabbing, and within three months you turn around and you sell that property. Usually, um, IRAs are set up for long-term investments. So when you start getting into flipping, you know, for quick profits and stuff, the IRS considers those things UBTI, and you would have to pay taxes on those. Um, again, debt, debt finance property in an IRA, that's the example that I just gave. So income from a debt finance property is treated as UBTI, and you would have to pay taxes on it. Now, one of the things I just found out is that if you have debt finance property in a solo 401k, it is not considered UBTI. So if you're a business owner that is on this line tonight, you seriously, seriously want to consider adding to your portfolio a solo 401k. There's a lot more things that you can do with a solo 401k that you could not do with a self-directed IRA. But, of course, solo 401ks are for small business owners. Now, this is a question that I've gotten a lot, <clears throat> and I wanted to address that today, which is what is a checkbook control IRA? When you utilize an LLC in your IRA, you have checkbook control of the IRA funds. So it refers to your ability to have a checkbook in your hands that is linked to the retirement funds. And when you identify an investment, you write the check. You're in total control. So really what it means is you have an LLC IRA, and then you have another IRA. If you that LLC that IRA LLC can invest in another LLC that you own, so now you have the checkbook for that other LLC that you own. If you're at the courthouse steps or you need to write a check for something, you get to write the check without having to go through the custodian and you know having to fill out the form. And sometimes I hear that some of these custodians it takes them a week or two to get back to people. Where we well we know that in real estate we don't have that kind of time. Sometimes you have a deal that is right there on the table and you want to take advantage of it. Using the checkbook control. IRA enables you to have access to your funds quickly so that you can take advantage of the deal. Now, one of the things I want to um, caveat that I want to put on there, that the whole checkbook control IRA came as a result of the Swanson case, and I'm, I'm encouraging everybody who's interested in self-directed IRAs to think about um, reading up the Swanson case. Make sure that you always use legal counsel who is very familiar with how to set up these kind of entities and guide you on issues, um, you know, when it comes to using a checkbook control LLC 
for your IRA investments. Now we're going to um, go over and hand over to Sherman. Um, Sherman is going to be talking to us from the real estate side, 10 things that you need to know about self-directed IRAs. Thank you, Bear. Um, I think you did a great job of talking about uh, some of the, the more technical issues, and I think you did a good job in, in really sort of sharing with folks that if you're going to be doing investing through self-directed IRAs, and the bottom line is everybody who's serious about real estate investing should be taking a look at this concept of self-directed IRAs. But if you're going to be doing it, you've got to make sure that you avoid what we call the third rail. And, and many people who are uh, on the webinar tonight, I'm sure, are familiar with Washington, D.C. They've probably ridden the metro uh, to get downtown, maybe go to the museums or maybe go to an office building. And the metro is a, a wonderful vehicle for getting you from point A to point B very efficiently, especially during rush hour. Rush hour might take you, you know, an hour to get from Bowie, Maryland to the White House, uh, but you can hop on the metro at uh, the Largo Town Center and be within walking t distance of the White House in about 25, you know, 20, 25 minutes. So um, the metro is a wonderful vehicle, wonderful tool for getting you where you want to go very quickly, very efficiently, uh, sometimes very cleanly. Uh, but if the metro were to ever break down and you had to w leave the car, walk out, and go uh, walk along uh, uh, the rail and then get out at the next station, the one thing they would say to you is, please don't step on the third rail, meaning the electrified rail. Um, so we have to make sure that we respect the fact that these IRAs are basically a gift from the IRS, and it's very rare that the IRS gives us anything, but it's a gift from the IRS, but it comes with rules. And if you violate the rules, um, you can wind up completely blowing up uh, your whole investment strategy. And uh, it, it, one of the last things in the world you ever want to do is put together a self-directed IRA and then have the IRS tell you that your strategy was disallowed because of something that you did, and now all of a sudden you have to pay taxes all, all the money. And, of course, the worst possible time that could happen would be about two weeks before you're ready to retire. So um, one of the things that I strongly recommend uh, whenever I talk about self-directed IRAs is make sure you sit down with your attorney or your CPA uh, and understand what the rules are to make sure that whatever it is that you think you want to do, that you're not potentially violating uh, any of those rules. So I thought, Barry, I thought you did a great job of sort of going through some of those. those, those. And, again, it can be a little technical, but it's really important. You've got to know it. <clears throat> so, uh, Barry, I, what I'd like to do is sort of go through the top ten things that all real investors know about self-directed IRAs. And uh, right off the bat, number ten is they are not illegal. And you're like, Sherman, why would you even say something like that? Well, um, oftentimes, most people's understanding of IRAs is what they learn from their employer. Their employer says, hey, if you set aside some money, we'll match it. Um, or, you, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's uh, April 15th is coming up, which is typical tax day for W-2 wage earners, and you're rushing to try to get those last-minute deductions, and what do you do? You, you run downtown to the Charles Schwab office. You run downtown to the Fidelity office. You go online and you make that investment into an IRA, and for the most part, you, you don't even really think about it. You don't even really care about it. Um, that's fine for W-2 wage employees, but for those of us who want to be real estate investors, who want to earn our freedom, who sort of want to have our cake and eat it too, we have to go beyond, uh, our, our knowledge base has to go beyond what the basic you know, W-2 employees, the wage slaves know. We, we have to think outside the box a little bit. So along comes somebody who says something like, uh, hey, did you know that you could buy real estate in an IRA you know, and create a tax-free income for life? Uh, or you could uh, invest in somebody else's real estate deal through your IRA. And so what's the first thing we want to do? We want to go down to uh, you know, Charles Schwab or Fidelity or, or any one of the number of uh, E-Trade, any one of the number of places that we traditionally think of as the ones who maintain and take care of our IRA. And we say, hey, we want to, we want to take some money and we want to put it into a real estate deal. And the 22-year-old kid behind the counter looks at you and goes, oh, I don't think you can do that. I, that's illegal. You ever heard that one, Bear? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the reality is it's not illegal. The problem is Charles Schwab, Fidelity, E-Trade, all of those guys exist for the sole purpose of selling you stocks and bonds and mutual funds because that's where they make their commissions. And when you put your money into real estate deals that they don't offer, they don't make any money. So because they don't make any money off of that, they don't want you to do that. 
but it is not illegal. The, the IRS code specifically allows you to set up a retirement vehicle, vehicle excuse me, as long as a third party, somebody other than your mom, your dad, your spouse, you know, a true third party, arm's length, somebody who, who's, who's, who's a professional, administers the paperwork and you're not self-dealing and you're not doing stuff under the table you're not supposed to be doing. So the IRS mandates that there has to be an IRS custodian. Now here's where the confusion comes in. Charles Schwab, Fidelity, all the big Wall Street firms say, hey, look, if we want to get control of people's money, and where do most people park their money? Not in their mattress and not in their bank account. Most people park their money in a retirement account. If we want to get control of people's retirement accounts, then we have to also be prepared to play the role of custodian. So what, where the confusion comes in is we think that only the Charles Schwabs, only the Fidelities, only the E-Trades can be IRA custodians, and that's not true. There's a whole universe of third-party custodians out there who are ready, willing, and able to assist you in administering your self-directed IRA, but they're not the household names that we typically think of. Um, so where do you find these guys? You, you find these guys basically by going into Google and typing in the phrase self-directed IRA custodian, and you need to put in all, all three or all four words, self-directed IRA custodian, and custodian is the most important word. Because if you simply type in the word self-directed IRA, you'll get something, you'll get a whole different uh, set, of, set of, of, of results. So, but if you go in and you type self-directed IRA custodian uh, in Google, you'll see names like Intrust, Equity Trust, Security Trust, PIMCO. And these are not necessarily household names, but all of them are approved uh, uh, to be uh, uh, custodians uh, and help you with your self-directed IRA strategy. So one of the first things we need to recognize is we can't go to the Charles Schwab's. We can't go to the Fidelities. We can't go to the traditional people we think about when we think about retirement to administer our self-directed IRA because they're not going to do it. Um, so that's, not, that's a sort of big idea number 10. Um, big idea number nine, which is closely related to it. So number nine is not all custodians are equal, and you do sort of want to shop around. What you will find is in that universe of third-party self-directed IRA custodians, some are more conservative, some are more liberal, and again, you want to sort of match up what they say and how they um, perform their duties with uh, what your tax advisor, what your CPA is advising you to do. So as an example, uh, Barry was very good about talking earlier about, um, you know, so the do's and don'ts and, and, and sort of self-dealing. I know of one IRA custodian out there, and I won't name them, but one IRA custodian, and as a part of their educational process, they teach this concept of buying a, a, a beachfront property using your IRA, and most of us know, because typically we've had to do this at some point in time in our lives or not, uh, or another, uh, most of us know that if you, if you put money into an IRA, you know, the traditional IRA, the traditional way of thinking of an IRA, you know, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, whatever, and we invest in mutual funds, most of us know that I think it's, what, 30 days a year you can pull money out of the IRA and then put it back without having a penalty? Is it 30 days, Bear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so most of us know we can, if we have money in our IRA, you know, so what, why do we do that? You know, short-term emergency, like taxes are due, we don't have enough money to pay the IRS, but we know with our next paycheck we'll get it in, we don't want to incur penalty and interest, so what do we do? We, we, we quote-unquote steal from our IRA for 30 days, but as long as we get it back before the 31st day, no harm, no foul, no penalty. Well, there's actually a third-party IRA, self-directed IRA custodian that teaches this concept of, hey, well, if you can take cash out for 30 days, why couldn't you buy, say, a beachfront condo through your IRA money and 30 days out of the year pull it out of your IRA and you go live in your beachfront condo for 30 days and then before the 31st day put it right back in? Now, that sounds really cool, sounds really sexy from the front of the room, from the, from the stage, but you, you got, you, if you sat down with your CPA and say, hey, Barry, what do you think about this? I would suspect that Barry would say, you know, that's – that's sort of a loose interpretation of the code. Yeah, that's a self-dealing. <laughs> and, and my suggestion, my, and this is just my personal suggestion, I, I'm just sort of a, I, I'm, I'm a deal maker. And by definition, if I'm a deal maker, and most of the folks on, on the webinar today would, would probably agree with this statement, if you're a deal maker, you have to learn how to take some risk, but you want to take some educated risk. 
And generally speaking, I sort of like to push the envelope when I'm doing deal making. But when it comes to IRAs, when it comes to self-directed IRAs, I'm probably more conservative than, say, Attila the Hun. Uh, I, I think a conservative strategy, because again, if you accidentally step on that third rail, you could blow up your whole uh, investment strategy, not even know it, except when it's too late to do anything about it to fix it. So generally speaking, again, not all IRA custodians uh, are, are uh, third-party custodians are created equal, but at the end of the day, you have to have a third-party custodian um, managing your money. And so and, um, you want to make sure that you find somebody who has a temperament and a philosophy that's similar to your own. If you tend to be more conservative, you should probably, you know, again, wh whoever you pick, you want to do a little bit of research and make sure that you pick the one that's, that's most compatible with, with your strategy. My personal suggestion is you go with a more conservative custodian uh, and not necessarily somebody who's going to tell you what you want to hear, but then you find out later on that, that they may not have been correct. Because understand this, it's, it's sort of like when you call the IRS and ask for tax advice because you're two weeks out from, from filing taxes, if the IRS gives you a bad answer, whose fault is it? Exactly, yep. yours. <laughs> so if, you're, if your third-party custodian gives you the wrong answer, you know, they gave you the answer you wanted to hear, but it wasn't the right answer, it's still your fault. So, you, so you, again, I would suggest that you go with a more conservative shop, but there's lots of them out there. There's, there's, at, least a half, there's at least a dozen third-party custodians, and they all sort of have their strengths and weaknesses. That's something you can sort of research on your own. Okay, so number, uh, big, big idea number eight. Um, and this is another one you'll hear, again, with the sort of the Charles Schwab's and the Fidelis of the world. world. You go down and, and you say to Charles Schwab or Fidelity, hey, I want to set up a self-directed IRA. Well, typically, this is the way it works. You go down and you say, I want to pull $20,000 out of your IRA and have it transferred to a third-party custodian. And the first thing they're going to ask you is, why do you want to transfer your money? You say, well, I want to set up a self-directed IRA, and you guys don't do that. And then they go, well, sure we do. You go, Really? That's great, because if I can keep the money here with you guys, that's wonderful. I, you know, I get my, my monthly statement. I don't have to move it. He said, sure, we, set up, we do self-directed IRAs. So tell you what, we're going to sit you down at this computer screen, and we're going to bring up this computer screen, and you can pick any one of 300 stocks to put into your portfolio. And you, and you're like, wait a minute. I, I want to move the money out of my IRA or, so, or portion of it so I can set up a self-directed IRA. I say, yeah, yeah, we understand. I want to set up a self-directed IRA because I want to invest in real estate. Oh, well, we have some REITs, some REITS, some REITs, some real estate stocks. Say, no, no, no. I want to go and invest in, you know, single-family houses or rehabs in, in my own backyard. And, they, and, again, they're going to give you the, you know, that's illegal. So here's, so here's why I bring up this point. A lot, again, the big boys do not want you to take your money out. So they will claim to do self-directed IRAs, but that's not what that you're – not, you're not talking about the same thing. Self-directed to them means you get to pick your own stocks. You get to pick your own list of items from some kind of a menu. It doesn't mean you having the ability to invest in what you want to invest in with your own money. So, again – you, you, it sort of reinforces, you know, number nine, you're going to have to be prepared to go hire a self-directed third-party IRA custodian if you really want to do self-directed investing. So the sooner you sort of do the research and pick one of those companies, and again, it almost doesn't matter which company you pick, because again, at the end of the day, they will invest your money whichever way you tell them to do it. Okay. Um, actually, so big uh, be before you moved on, Sherman, another thing that I found out in interviewing these custodians, you actually also want to go with a custodian who would agree to work with a facilitator or an administrator or a CPA such as myself, because sometimes you have custodians that are either liberal or conservative, but are not necessarily open to um, alternative ways of doing things. Or That's if they're point. liberal, they have you on the far, you know, far end, far um, end of the spectrum. So I know one, another very important fact in picking a custodian is you want to work with a custodian who is open to working with a facilitator or an administrator because what the facilitator and administrator does I'm um, like you know I have a facilitator that I know Sachi Kavanas one of the things that she does is she's a real estate investor she knows exactly what real estate investors need and sometimes these custodians you know they're custodians but they may not know all the real estate strategies that are out there. So you kind of have this middle person that acts as a go-between um, the two. So I also wanted to mention that there's, there's custodians, but there's also facilitators and administrators. Good point. So big idea number seven, um, at the end of the day, it's your money, 
and it's your decision. And that, and that, and that's something you really got to come to grips with before you pull money out and put it into a self-directed IRA. If you're the kind of person that likes being told what to do, if you're the kind of person who finds security in being told what stocks to buy, what mutual funds to invest in, um, then self-directed IRA investing may not be the right vehicle for you. Um, but if you're the kind of person who feels comfortable in making your own decisions, if you're the kind of person who says, look, you know, I sort of like want you to take the training wheels off and sort of let me do what I want to do, um, then you're probably going to be okay. Because understand this, a third-party custodian, a true third-party custodian who has nothing to sell you is not going to tell you what investments to make. A third-party custodian may or may not give you an opinion on are you making the right decision. Technically, they're not supposed to. Technically, they're not supposed to put a value judgment on the deal you want to go into. So you can't really look to them to sort of like guide you as to whether or not you're making a smart business decision. That's why you need to have – you know, your, your, your other advisors around you. Um, but once the time comes to say, hey, I'm putting my money into this deal, understand that's your decision. So you can't come back later on and say, hey, you know, you, you, know, you put me into a bad, you, you know, you put me into a bad mutual fund. You put me, it doesn't work that way. It's your money. It's your decision. Okay, big idea number six, uh, know the rules and play it safe. And I think uh, a very really sort of like, covered most of that when she talked about the self-dealing and the double-dealing and all that other stuff. Uh, so I'm not going to really cover that um, at all. Um, big idea number five. Um, basically, and this is the meat and potatoes of it, there are three fundamental ways to play the self-directed IRA game. Okay, And this is worth writing down. So anybody's got pencil and paper, you're taking notes, this is the point in time where you really want to start taking some serious notes. Number one, you can make money off the efforts of others, meaning Let's say that you want to become a real estate investor, and you're still sort of new to this game of real estate investing. One of the best ways to learn the business is to find somebody who you, who you know, and you've done a little bit of due diligence, a little bit of homework, and you believe that you can trust, and make the offer to invest in their deal. And you know, clearly define what the term is going to be, what your rate of return is going to be, etc. But basically – you're making money off of their efforts, their energy, their time. In other words, when you, when all of us hear the, the expression OPM, you know, other people's money, we are the OPM. And in that scenario, we are the OPM. We're bringing money to the table, and we're partnering up with a more experienced investor. Now, this is this is something that I strongly advocate. A lot of people miss this. If you partner up, if you partner up with a, a a more experienced investor after you've done your homework to make sure they know what they're doing. Make sure you ask them, hey, if I invest in your deal, can I look over your shoulder? D don't be a passive you know, money investor. Invest the money, but also ask for permission as a part of your negotiation to get in there and see what's going on. All they can say is no, and then you can decide if you're going to put your money in the deal or not. Um, number two, make money tax-free off your own efforts. And I'll talk a little bit in a second about how to do that, but basically – you can set up a self-directed IRA, and you can decide to take the money and invest it into deals that you're doing. And again, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it, do it and I'll get into the details of that in a second. But then the third way to play the game is make money by having the money to do bigger deals. So let's sort of take a look at each one of them. So big idea number four, again, still counting down the list. So here's how to make money uh, using self-directed IRAs from the efforts of others. Okay, You can use your self-directed IRA to get into somebody else's deal and again, most importantly, and I think a lot of new investors miss this, you can have the chance to look over their shoulder. Now, this is not the same thing as using your IRA to buy a boot camp. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about taking your IRA money and saying, hey, so-and-so is having a boot camp, uh, and it's $5,000. I'm going to use my IRA money to buy. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about finding a real investor, you know, not somebody who's just selling books and tapes, you know, going around the country selling books and tapes. Find a real investor who's really doing deals and say, hey, I hear that, you're pretty, that you pretty much are the, the go-to guy in town or the go-to gal in town on this type of investing. Um, do you ever take in private partners? Are you ever taking in money partners? Well, yeah, from time to time I do. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm willing to put up some money if you're willing to let me look over your shoulder so at the end of the day when the deal's done, I get my money back, I get a return on my investment, plus I get additional knowledge by seeing how deals actually get done. Uh, and I don't think enough newbies – 
really understand the, the power and the leverage they can have by setting up a structure like that. Um, unlike investing in mutual funds or the hottest stocks, um, you can actually partner with somebody who's willing to show you how to get the deals. In other words, if you make an investment in an Apple computer, you, you, you can't just call up Steve Jobs and say, hey, can I fly out to Cupertino and sit in your office for, for, for a day? It, it, it ain't going to happen. But if you invest through your IRA with a, with a local investor and you make one of the strings attached as I get a chance to ride in your car with you and see how you do the deal making, chances are they're more likely to say yes than no. So that's sort of something unique that you can do with your retirement funds that you can't do when you're just simply investing in stocks and bonds and mutual funds. Um, but again, at the end of the day, if you're going to invest in somebody else's efforts, make sure they have a track record and make sure that they know what they're doing. Okay. Um, big idea number three, how to make money tax free off your own efforts. Well, real quick, um, my strong suggestion is when you're setting up an IRA, because typically you're taking money out of an IRA and you're, and you're setting up a self-directed IRA, my strong suggestion is all things being equal, do a Roth IRA, which means you pay the taxes up front, but everything you do from there on out is tax-free. Now, why would I make such a, a ghastly suggestion? Because a lot of CPAs say, no, 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 no. You know, if, if the tax consequence is too high, don't do that. My suggestion is bite the bullet, pay the taxes, because you as an investor – have a, 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 who knows what they're doing, have a higher opportunity or greater opportunity to make obscene returns versus putting it simply in the stock market. Everybody knows if on average when you put money in the mutual funds, they say you're typically going to make somewhere between 8 to 10 percent. Well, what if you were a hard money lender? And most people don't realize this, but most hard money lenders make 24 percent rate of return. So well, Sherman, that can't be true because hard money lender told me they're going to charge me 15 percent. Yeah, but what are the points? What are the points on the front end? What are the, and everybody understands what the points are. Points are prepaid interest. So most, most hard money lenders operate off of a business model that they're making 24%. Well, what if you could become a hard money lender and you're the one who's basically lending the money, but the money's coming out of your IRA and you're getting a 24% rate of return? At 24% rate of return, that money is going to double in size about every three and a half years. So, you, you know, let's say you have the ability to put up $50,000 in an IRA. That $50,000 is going to be a, become 100000 in about three years. That 100000 is going to become 200000 in about six years. That 200000 is going to become 400000 in about nine years. Do you want to pay taxes? You know, the initial investment was 50000 Now it's worth 400000 almost 10 years later. Do you want to pay taxes on 400000 My suggestion is bite the bullet and pay the tax up front. Okay. Now that's you know that's just one example talking about 24% rate of return as a hard money as a hard money lender. If you actually use options, you put an option on a property, right? We all know about wholesaling. Let's say that let's say that you're wholesaling deals, and one of the things that you, we know from wholesaling is that you have, typically have to put up an earnest money deposit. Well, what happens if the earnest money deposit, the thousand dollars, came out of your IRA? And what would happen if it was the IRA? that was actually the entity that was under that was making the contract to buy the property and you flip that property and all of a sudden you made five thousand dollars so you put up a thousand you make back five thousand what's that rate of return of there <laughs> it's, five, it's, 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 it's technically it's five hundred percent but you could make five thousand dollars on a one thousand dollar earnest money deposit check in about thirty to forty five days you you know you repeat that three or four times during the course of the year, you put up a thousand and you're looking at making sixty thousand dollars on that same thousand dollar earnest money deposit. What's that rate of return? And if you do that through an I a properly structured IRA vehicle, all that sixty thousand is tax free. So just I mean just a little bit of thinking and again, I'm still talking about basically conservative strategies. This is there's nothing you know, I'm not even pressing the envelope with these kind of strategies. Okay, this is a very conservative model. But if you are sort of forward thinking and you think about doing what a lot of real estate investors do just to sort of, you know, make extra money, but you do it through your IRA, you will find that the rates of return you're going to get are so much higher than what you're going to get in the stock market. So why in the world would you want to set something up where you have to pay taxes after You've done all that. Go ahead and bite the bullet and pay the taxes now because you could take a $1,000 check and turn it into 60000 within a year, which you can't do, by the way. Most people can't do in the stock market. There's, there's no reason why you'd want to pay taxes on the 60 
when you could have the opportunity to pay taxes on the thousand through a Roth IRA, and then everything you make inside the IRA is tax free at the end of the day. So that's one strategy for making money tax free off of your own efforts. And don't have enough time to go into too many more details, but maybe when we get in the Q and A, I can I can talk a little bit more about that. Um, big idea number two: um, uh, make money by offering others a chance to invest in your deal. So. Again, once you get started as an investor, most investors sort of try their hand at lots of different things their first couple of years when they really get serious. And then they say, you know what, uh, I tried the rehabbing, I tried the wholesaling, uh, I tried the lease options, uh, but this one strategy I really, really like. This is where I'm going to sort of gravitate and stand my ground, and this is where I'm going to make my money as an investor. Once you figure out what that is, what you will typically find out is you don't have enough money to do the kind of deals you want to do. So a good example would be rehabbing. You know, most rehabbers operate off of using hard money loans, but sometimes hard money is not available. So where do you turn? Typically, if you've got good experience, good track record, and you've got a good list, you can begin turning to private investors. But where do most people keep their money at night? It's not in the mattress, it's not in the refrigerator, and it's not in their bank account. It's certainly not in their savings account. Where do most people have cash stashed? It's in their IRA. So if you have a track record, and I do not recommend the strategy for newbies, if you're still trying to figure out, you know, where, where you are as an investor, this is not for you yet, but it's something for you to work towards. But if you have figured out where you are as an investor and you are good at what you're doing, then it only makes sense for you to begin to start developing a private investor program, and you will, and you will find that the vast majority of people who have – Ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. They're pulling it out of their retirement account, and you have to show them the the, the, the way. You have to you, you have to literally take them by the hand if they've never done self-directed IRA investing, and show them how to set up a self-directed IRA account so that they can get their money out of their retirement account and into your deal. But once you learn this secret and learn how to do it, you're going to see your your real estate investing business explode. You're going to go from rehabbing one or two houses a year to rehabbing one or two houses every couple of months. And your production value is just going to skyrocket because now you've got the working capital. You use a strategy of private investors along with hard money lenders. You're going to find that you can do a lot more deals and you're going to make a lot more money. So that's sort of big idea number two. So big idea number one is, of course, what I call the perfect investor storm, uh, which is if you understand – how to make money as an investor. You have one key strategy, and you focused on it, and you're mastering it. In other words, you're not chasing the shiny objects in the water anymore. You, know, you, you, you tried your hand at wholesaling. You tried your hand at, at lease options. You tried your hand at short sales. You tried your hand at bird dogging. You tried your hand at rehabbing, and you ultimately discover, you know what, I'm pretty good at rehabbing, and I'm going to stand my ground here, and you're good at it. And you understand how self-directed IRAs work because you've, done, you've, you've, you've made the time to be on this webinar and do a little homework afterwards. And you understand how to raise private investor money, understanding that most people's money is going to come from their self-directed IRA or come from their IRA, you have to, and you have to help them set up a self-directed IRA. You put those three things together, and you never have to worry about where the money's coming from to do your next deal. It's going to, it's going to, it literally is going to come automatic, and that's why I call it – the quote-unquote perfect investor storm. Those three things coming together in one investor's kit is going to make the difference between whether you do five, six, seven deals this year or you do one deal this year and whether or not this thing continues to be a hobby for you or it actually becomes a solid six or possibly seven-figure business for you that lets you leave your day job and lets you step out there and become a full-time investor, a real investor. Thank you, Sherman. What a wealth of information. Um, right now, um, before we open it up to questions, I hope you guys are getting your questions ready. You can start typing in your questions in the chat session for those that have questions. Um, if you like what you heard um, and want to get more information, um, simply go to www.unlimitedcapitalfreegift.com. Um, go to www.unlimitedcapitalfreegift.com, and um, we can take it from there. And then set your filter to receive emails from realinvestors.com. I um, also wanted to talk to you guys about the wealth building plan. Just in the next two minutes, one of the unique advantages that I bring to the table is that I provide an integrated approach to wealth building, meaning that I don't just look 
at just preparing your taxes. I look at helping you to reduce your tax. You know, I look at asset um, and asset protection and entity structuring. I look at your deals. I look at retirement planning. We look at year-end tax planning. We also do business meetings, meaning we act as your CFO for one day and take an objective look at your real estate strategy and seeing if you're doing everything that you absolutely need to do to make money. You know, the goal of every business is to make money, not spend money. So one of the things that Wealth Building CPA brings to the table is that we provide an integrated approach to wealth building. And that's actually one of the reasons why we started this webinar. I got a lot of phone calls asking about self-directed IRAs, and I said, you know, I'm going to do a webinar, and I'm going to have Sherman on the call so that everybody understand that there's a lot of ways, even though the economy is the way it is and banks are not lending, our 401Ks, our self-directed IRAs, our Roth IRAs are available for us to keep, you know, in getting involved in real estate investments. Um, if you would like to get a free consultation, we offer free consultations. Our phone number is on the screen, 1-888-502-3767, 1-888-502-3767. Or you can go to www.wealthbuildingcpa.com. And like I said, if you want to get a free gift, go to unlimitedcapitalfreegift.com. Right now, I'm going to, as I promised, I'm going to open this up for questions. I'm encouraging everybody, as many people as you can, um, go ahead and ask as many questions. We will stay on the line until we've answered all the questions. So right now, the um, screen is back on. Um, I have everybody online now. If you have a question, please um, go ahead. Feel free to ask. Good afternoon. How are you guys doing today? We're fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Is I that just, James? Yes, it is. Hi, James. How are you? I'm doing just fine, thank you. I was listening to um, an Internet call probably maybe two or three weeks ago. What they said was that you should never buy property uh, in the LLC name. I mean, in the uh, uh self direct the our our account l l c name what do you think about that and did they give the reason why because I don't know why they would be given that kind of wrong advice, but why did they say that they did say it, but I don't remember that's why I come asking you well, well uh, there, Sherman go ahead I was gonna say I mean to say never is a little strident a little harsh i I don't know if I would ever say never. Um, I, I would I would say make sure whatever strategy you're going to implement, particularly when you're talking about actually buying a, a piece of real estate, that you run it by your CPA, you run it by Barry, and 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 let her and let her give you a, her 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 two cents, her advice on it, because it, it could save you from doing something really stupid. I, I but I can see some of the reasons why you would not want to buy a piece of real estate in a self-directed IRA. Um, number one, um, you, you lose the tax benefits that come along with real estate ownership, typically when you invest through a um, tax-exempt vehicle. So you don't well, get you're the talking about when the real estate strategy is buy and hold. When the, it's, I'm sorry, thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. So that's that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so go yeah, ahead, Sherman. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second thing is obviously, of course, because of the fact that you're, you, you can't borrow and so, and you can't have recourse, you know. So, therefore, the some of the some of the some of because of the IRS regs, some strategies are prohibited. So, if you so you pretty much have to be ready to buy all cash, or if you do have a loan, I guess it would have to be a non-recourse loan. And there are very few non-recourse investors. Like I don't know of any non-recourse investor loans out there. Um, but I would never say never do never don't do something. I would say make sure you check with the CPA, and I would just simply talk about. Generally speaking, there are some advantages. There are some disadvantages. Um, I, I have found that, generally speaking, um, the, the, the best real estate investing strategies for using self-directed IRAs are typically when you're doing sort of quick cash, quick hit, and the upside profit potential is so high. So, again, like, you know, buying real estate uh, or, or using options to buy real estate and then flipping the contract. Um, another one that we didn't talk about um, during the presentation, but I have firsthand knowledge, is people basically buying um, pieces of, of land and putting land under contract with options and using the earnest money deposit or the good faith money out of your IRA, and the IRA is actually buying the piece of land, and then you get all the approvals 
and then turn around and flip the land to a home builder. And so maybe you have a piece of land under contract for, let's say, $50,000, but after you get all these approvals in place with the local jurisdiction, local municipality, a home builder will come along and pay you one hundred fifty or $200,000 for that same lot, and you're looking at that obscene amount of profit in a relatively short period of time, you would probably want to see if there's a way to get that into your IRA so that you don't have to pay taxes on it. And again, you, you, you couldn't do it if you, needed to, if you needed to use the money to live, if you needed to you know, buy groceries with the money. But if you don't necessarily need the money and you're going to look at those kinds of profits, then I would by all means sit down with a bear and say, how do we get as many of these kinds of deals done through the IRA so, I, so that I minimize my tax hit? And, James, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, even though I advise some of my clients not to um, do buy and hold in an IRA simply because of the tax benefits, there are other clients that I've advised to go ahead and do buy and hold in an IRA simply because when we do the analysis, they're purchasing this property cash. And so because they're purchasing the property cash, we don't have mortgage interest to deal with. So even when you factor in the depreciation, they still have positive cash flow. Right now, I have a client who purchased about six properties for about $200,000, and his cash flow is going to be about $36,000 a year. Well, he did not purchase it in an IRA, and that's one of the advice I'm giving him, that for subsequent properties that he's going to be buying, he needs to do it in his self-directed IRA. So I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all, you never want to purchase property in your self-directed IRA. It's a facts and circumstances case. Everybody's situation is different. You know, for some clients, I'll say do it, and for some clients, I'll say no. We have to look at the details. So don't take any canned advice out there. Your situation is unique, and that's why it's called self-directed, meaning that it's individualized. So it's not a one-size-fits-all advice, so don't purchase property in your IRA. Um, Tony has a question, and I'm going to um, direct this to Sherman. How are you combining IRA money with hard money lenders when most don't allow seconds? That's a great question, Tony. Uh, and, that, and that, generally speaking, that is true. A lot of uh, hard money lenders will not allow uh, seconds, meaning a second mortgage behind their mortgage. But what you could do is structure it so that the IRA comes in as equity. Uh, again, in this current environment, you see a lot of hard money lenders demanding that you, quote-unquote, have skin in the game. Um, but unlike traditional housing lenders, they're not necessarily asking you where's your equity coming from. They just want to make sure that when you get to the settlement table, you know, that on, let's say, a, a $150,000 house, that they're going to lend you the money to buy it and then lend you the money to fix it up so you can turn around and sell it as a $225,000 house. They want to make sure that you're coming to the table with ten dollars or $20,000. Well, you can basically use your IRA – and use the funds in your IRA to come up with that equity, it wouldn't be a second. It would, you know, Barry would work with you so that, let's say that you're buying in the name of an LLC, the 20000 that's coming in from your, from your IRA is basically coming in as equity, and then you've got the hard money lender. Uh, and oftentimes hard money loans can be good, lo- good loans to do that with because not every hard money lender necessarily demands recourse, meaning de- demands a guarantee. Um, so th- that's, one way, that's one way you could do it. The other way that you could do it, which is really clean, is you use somebody else's IRA, and it's third-party arm's length. Obviously, it's not going to violate any self-dealing rules, but they're putting up their IRA, and they're putting up the equity so you as the rehabber can get the deal done. Hard money lender comes to the table with their portion. Uh, your, your money partners is putting up their money through the, through the, through the self-directed IRA. When the deal is done, you sell the house. Profits are made. Hard money lender gets their piece at the settlement table. You get a profit check. You turn around and, and give the profit check not back to your money partner, but you send it back with the appropriate coupons or the appropriate paperwork back to the IRA custodian. And now they've gotten return of their IRA dollars plus a profit on their IRA dollars, and you get to keep some portion for yourself as profit. You're sitting there going, well, you know, I split the money sort of three ways. Yeah, but if you structure properly, you got no money going into the deal as the rehabber. And you get money coming back out when the deal is done, but you didn't have to put up any of your own cash. You used the hard money lender's money for your debt, and you used your IRA, um, uh, self-directed IRA proceeds from your money partner for your equity, and you, put, you didn't put a dime into the deal. You still get paid at the end of the day with, with, with a piece of the profit. All right. Thank you, Sherman. The next question that we have is whether or not your LLC can partner 
with your self-directed IRA to purchase a property. That's not considered self-dealing. As long as you're not purchasing real estate that you already own or that is owned um, by somebody else. The whole goal is you really don't want to be doing business where you're purchasing property with property with any of a disqualified persons. But if your LLC is bringing 50% of the money to the table and your self-directed IRA is bringing 50%, that's not considered self-dealing. It's if you're purchasing real estate from a disqualified person or selling to a disqualified person. So it's really the property um, that, that determines the self-dealing rules. Um, so those are all the questions that we have on the chat. I'll open it back up to the phone. Does anybody have any questions by phone? Um, your questions through chat. If you have any additional questions, I'll open it back up to those that are on the phone. Does anybody have any other questions? Could I ask you another question then, please? Yes. Okay. Can the Roth our account, self-direct the our account, be a member of uh, your LLC? Can your self-directed IRA be a member of your own LLC? Right. Yes. And that's where okay. we had talked about the whole thing about the checkbook control. Okay. But that's where I strongly advise that you work with an attorney, with a facilitator, and an administrator. A custodian would would agree to release the funds to your LLC. But what happens from that point is not really the responsibility of the custodian. That's why you really need to work with a facilitator and an administrator who would be able to advise you on how to structure it so that it's not considered self-dealing. So the, the short answer is yes. The long answer is please do it with guidance. It's not something you can just go out there and do on your own. And this reminds me, this is a very important thing that I need to share. The IRS is really cracking down on real estate investors. Um, the audit is on the rise for real estate investors with everything that's happening in the market. Um, there, there's a lot of losses, you know, in the people that are selling properties and all that. So the IRS is looking at everything closely. And right now, that what you know, what I when I spoke to Sachi this afternoon, one of the things that she said was that the IRS will call up a custodian and find out whether or not the IRA LLC is invested in another LLC and whether there's checkbook control. So that's why we suggest using a facilitator and an administrator who can be a co-manager of your LLC. That way the whole checkbook control then is kind of like an arm's length transaction. So there's ways to get this done. But please be sure that you are aware of the rules and know that the IRS is really looking at um, real estate investors, not even just with the self-directed IRA, but just in general. The IRS audits are on the rise. Um, question, is it possible to convert, hold on, let me see this question in full. Is it possible to change a traditional self-directed IRA into a Roth self-directed IRA? The answer is yes, but like Sherman said, you'll have to pay those fees up front. But the benefit of doing that, of going from traditional to Roth, is once you've paid the taxes, now this money is available for you to make you know, thousands and thousands of dollars tax-free. So the answer to that is, is yes. Um, another question, Abera, let me come from. LLC can make 50% of the profits and self-direct that IRA can make 50% of the profits from a rehab. Profits of LLC can be paid out to members and the other 50% can go back into the self-direct that IRA tax fee. That is correct, yes. Um, now, one of the things to keep in mind, sometimes with a rehab, um, I'm still doing some research on this, but one of the things I found out that with some rehabs, the IRS could consider that UBTI, meaning unrelated business taxable income, when you're in the, when you start purchasing property and you don't hold it for a long time, you turn around and you sell it, because they consider retirement a long-term strategy. Doing a rehab that is so such a short term, you know, where it's not six months or more, or eight months or more sometimes UBTI will come into play, but the custodians will assist you in telling you exactly what kind of rehab deals are subject to um, subject to UBTI. All right, do I have any other questions? Okay, can you have more than one self-directed 
IRA. Absolutely. You can have as many self-directed um, IRAs as you want, as long as they meet, you know, whatever the contribution, lim you know, the, the normal contribution limits for that year. But, yes, you can have more than one self-directed IRA. In fact, I would say if you're doing something that's sort of a new strategy for you and you're not quite sure and you're thinking, well, it might, I might go sort of close to the line on this one, and you sit down with the bear, you sit down with the CPA, and they're like, hmm, I think you can do this. It, it might be wise to set up a new self-directed IRA so that if in the event that for whatever reason that particular deal is disallowed, it doesn't taint all the other investments that you've done. Yeah. All right, any other questions? All right, we're going to wrap it up here in about two, three minutes um, if we don't have any more questions. I encourage you to ask all your questions. That's one of the benefits of us doing the webinar this way where, you know, some other webinars, you're not able to get your questions answered live. But we're here live to answer your questions because we want to bring value to you. We want to educate you and make sure you understand what you need to do to be successful as a real estate investor. Um, money that is not being used for investment in real estate and is sitting in the self-directed IRA waiting to be utilized. What should I do with that? So, Sherman, I'll let you um um, send a note to Sherman. Dot no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let me you tell can, you, you what to my, do with um, it. <laughs> some some custodians actually have uh, agreements with money market accounts. Some custodians actually have agreements so that they would allow you to use their services to invest in mutual funds, to invest in, in money market kind of short term instruments. Um, but again, you know, you want to have a long-term wealth building plan. And if you have a long-term wealth building plan and that long-term wealth building plan says, hey, you're going to pursue this strategy, and it's simply a function of, you know, you don't need the money today, but you're going to need it in 30 days, um, then I wouldn't mess with it. Um, but if your long-term wealth building plan says, okay, this is the strategy you're going to pursue, and you're not going to need the money today, uh, you don't need the money today, but you might not need it again for another, you know, six months. You know, you may want to partner up with uh, a more experienced rehabber, somebody who's got a track record, who you know can get in and get out and get deals turned around in about two to three months. And you might want to have a conversation with them about them, you know, using some of your funds and getting a higher rate of return than you might get, you know, versus a uh, 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 and certainly right now with sort of the gyrations of the stock market, I mean, I wouldn't recommend anybody go in the stock market right now or gold, you know, because it, it, it could just as easily lose 20, 30 percent of its value. And you thinking you're going to, quote, unquote, park your money in a, quote, unquote, safe area and you lose 30 percent of your value in two or three months and now you're ready to go back. In your, I mean, that could be quite catastrophic. So, again, this is the kind of thing you want to do in partnership with with your your, your wealth building CPA and 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 really having a clear 